Welcome to Knock Nation. Welcome back, guys. Jarrell here. And I'm Josh, and today we have a Fear the Walking Dead video for you. We are going to rank the Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead villains. Yes, man. What are some amazing groups of villains? Some good, some bad, but through the Fear the Walking Dead series, there have been some, you know, pretty much all of them are memorable. Villains are supposed to be memorable. There is probably one set in here that is slightly not as memorable, but they did their deed, they did their justice, and, you know, we're ranking them all. So there's, yeah. there's 11 of them, and uh, Josh and I don't know what our rankings are between us. Um, I'm sure that a few of them will probably have the same, but um, most of these might be a lot of it different because there's villains that I preferred better and then there's villains that he preferred better or vice versa. Like, he didn't like these ones or I might, I may have liked them just because of who they were, the character and all that. But it's our own opinions that we're going to give you guys. And then we want you guys to let us know your rankings of these villains in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, once again, through through the Fear the Walking Dead series, which we loved, uh, you know, that the first three series, the first three seasons were absolutely amazing then they got new showrunners in season four and you can definitely see the change in season four that it's one absolutely. reason why it's one reason why the actor who plays nick um frank delane left the series he felt that the change in the direction wasn't good he was already starting to get kind of he's kind of a weird guy anyway but he was kind of already feeling like his, the story of nick was coming to an end so he decided that he wanted out and as you guys know the seasons went up and down but through, mostly through the course mostly down mostly down but Most, there were there, I, there I, were some good spots I, I, there, there were, really was there there were um i i don't know i just when morgan came it it made it a little better but then you also got mm. that feeling of like who's the leader <sighs> you know they're throwing, madison's gone they're throwing morgan in there and it feels right. like they're just trying to rescue this show yeah uh, uh, alicia took like a seat back they, like. so they put a seat yeah they, they took a step back with her which angered us and angered other fans yeah. it's like she's the clark the show's about the clarks but yeah i mean we got dwighty boy dwighty dwight and sherry were great additions we love those two dwight is awesome um i would have much yeah. rather had dwight and sherry than morgan honestly yeah it's nothing against lenny james no I just, no I don't know. It just felt weird having Morgan around. It did for a bit. I mean, it got better, but a lot of fans were thinking it was now called Morgan and Friends, like <laughs> <laughs> because he was like the 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 leader. You know, it wasn't Alicia. Yeah. They didn't write it that way in a way. But uh, so yeah, let us go through our rankings. From what we're gonna do is go from worst to best. So we're gonna start at the very bottom. Who you got? Um, so I, I, I'm gonna go through the first two for me because they're tied. Okay. Uh, and I think that you, I, I know who you probably have as your last. It's either these or you're going to go one other one that I put just a, so I, I almost gave my, my top bottom three, I should say. Well, basically from, from what you just said, your bottom three is my same bottom three, but They're in, just a, different in a different order. order. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. So my first two, 11 and 10 position are Ben and Sam. Yeah. Crane and Padre. Shrike Krennic from Padre. Um, those are my ten and ten and nine. My bottom is Martha from season four, and and my nine is Martha. So let me explain Ben and Sam. I I just felt like maybe it was the buildup of Padre. Maybe mm. it was the buildup of this this villain and the buildup of how like just how they were telling us this Padre story, and then come to find out, boom, it's this brother and sister that are like behind a wall that. Like it was the, the the arc was terrible. It was horrible. Like the, it the wasn't, build up was great. It wasn't believable at all. Mm -hmm. I just oh man, I I could not stand. It. I when I think of a villain, I think of someone that has power over not just the group that they are ruling, but over everyone and, and they have the strength to take over our group i think of a, a prime example of it is negan mm -hmm. negan was a very powerful leader mm -hmm. um and he also willed his force on communities and groups around him um these two n i don't see that at all yeah so yeah they're they're both leaders of padre they're brother and sister um they uh they went a little crazy because during the fall, you know, their father got killed 
And but their their mentality was just their their mentality was off. I mean, they were taking children, stealing kids from other families because they felt that they were the they could raise them better than what people could do out in the in the main in, in you know call them in the shit. I've been playing a lot of Days Gone, so basically just in the shit <laughs> in the zombified world. But you're stealing other people's kids, and you're basically holding them in confinement, and then you're brainwashing them. And everyone is called a bird, a bird name, you know, Crane, Shrike. I mean, those are bird names. And Finch. Finch. And <laughs> they also did experiments on kids. They were having kids and people be bitten by walkers and seeing if they can try to stop the turn or whatever. And they, they killed a lot of kids. These people, in a way, yes, they were ruthless and brutal. But the way that it was written was terrible because the mystery of Padre was cool. When we first yeah. heard about Padre, you know, Alicia's trying to find Padre, and there's this, you know, we find out that, yes, Padre was a military uh, place that, you know, these military leaders went to after the fall, and in, in a way it was, but just what, what turned out to then be Padre <laughs> was just terrible, and these, these, these villains were terrible. Um, they were yeah. weak. They, they were, were they were they were weak. They, um, yeah. it, it it reminded me of, and I think they were this. It reminded me of an affluenced kid, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. that you know has been raised, you know, in a rich family and hasn't really seen the real world, and then like they they lived in the coattails of their father, mm -hmm. and their father's the only reason why they came of possession of Padre, right? Like, yeah. it just I don't know. I just don't think that they were as powerful. Or or scary, believe it or not, as Martha, my not, next one. Yeah, not scary. Um, they had they had people behind them, but they they didn't really have a lot of a pull. Uh, ben was killed by walkers from a fight with Madison and Troy. Um, Sam was actually uh, bitten by her zombified father, who came up uh, when they released a bunch of walkers from that area and bit her in the shoulder. Then June took her to the treatment area. She was demanding that June perform these tests on her to try to stop the virus. June, of course, refused. Uh, she called out to, I think, Dwight and Sherry as, unfortunately, their son Finch was dying. And they asked, what do you want me to do? And Dwight was like, just make it quick. And um, then eventually Ben did come in. This is before Ben died, of course. But Ben did come in and eventually put her down. And then later on, uh, during the fighting for Padre, that's when Ben uh, was killed. So Now, if I yeah. had to rank both of them, I do have it wrong. I, I, I would rank Ben the lowest and then Sam, because I do think Sam was more ruthless than Ben. Sam was Sam was a little bit better in her character because we got to see more of her because she yeah. was more of the leader. Ben was more on the inside pretending to be Padre yeah. on the other side of the wall, giving interviews. And but like Sam was more ruthless. Hearing the voice. But yeah, yeah, Sam was more ruthless. Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, so uh, as we had these swaths, my, my last worst was Martha. Martha was from season four. Um, <laughs> we, we have made fun of this villain uh, in, in all a lot of videos of fear the walking dead and it it did honestly terrible. take me a lot to not put her down at the bottom right mm -hmm. because this was a terrible villain it was one person one person one person not yeah. one person that had a group one person one individual person now you do kind of feel sorry for her in a way. I mean, yeah. she did lose her husband during the fall. They were part of, I think they were in a car crash and no one came to help. Not, not that saying no one wanted to help. I think they were just in the middle of nowhere or not. And, you know, not in a busy road where a lot of people were coming. So, but she went insane from this and she felt that asking for help is a weakness. So she would purposely set up traps for people saying, oh, I can help you. Here are supplies. And then she'd kill them. And this is one person dealing with our group <laughs> yeah. of many. Yeah. And she's fucking shit up constantly yeah. until yeah. she's finally taken down. Do, but do, like, my God. Do you want to know how you get away from this villain? Huh. You, you travel like 100 miles. Exactly. <laughs> Go away. But it was part of that storyline of our group helping others. Uh, Alicia, especially because yeah. of everything that went down with her mother, you know, losing her mother and her brother. Um, and Morgan, you know, trying to find, you know, a sense of morality and a sense of self again because of what what happened with him so they didn't want to leave Bartha to just 
continue to kill people willingly. So they wanted to help stop her. And in the end, she was shot by Wendell. She she refused help from Morgan for her wounds. She eventually allowed herself to be bitten by a walker. And then later on, Morgan came back and put her down. But uh, I mean, yeah, no, no offense to the actress. The actress was great. You never blame the actor or actress who, who does a part. You know, they're being directed and it's being written that way. I don't know what was going on in the showrunners' heads where, <laughs> yeah, let's have a cool villain for the second half of the season four. One individual person wreaking havoc for many episodes to finish she, off the the new season of Fear, which was basically season four. Yeah. Like, that was the that was not a good way to start. Yeah. One, you kill Madison, you kill Nick, and then you have the stupid villain. Yeah. <laughs> And like, it wasn't just that like it was like Madison wasn't killed but you know <laughs> her weapon of choice was to have a walker around stringed around the neck yeah with a pole yeah wasn't that like her main thing who Martha yeah kind of yeah <laughs> she just stood behind it yeah it, it was not good it was ridiculous it was not good at all yeah yeah it was terrible so our bottom three was that the beer bottle season no beer bottle was like season five, five. yeah okay. yeah Still bad. Love, love the beer bottle, but I would prefer the beer bottle over the Martha. <laughs> so yeah, our bottom three are the same, just different order. But either way, yeah, those are the terrible, the, the the top three worst villains in the yeah. show for sure. All right, All right, number eight. I have Reed and Connor. Reed and Connor. So do I. Yep. Uh, Reed and Connor from season two. Now the crazy thing is that they were only in two episodes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but. It was interesting. I mean, it was yeah. part of the time where they were on the sea. They were on the Abigail. Um, Alicia, they were part of this Connor's Pirates. So Reed is the younger brother of Connor. And they have this pirate group. And um, early on in season two, Alicia was talking to someone over the radio. And his name was Jack. And, you know, nice kid. You know, it was somebody that Alicia was talking to. She was young. She was still naive at the time. And uh, she said, I can't remember how it all went down. But eventually, she met with Jack. And it turned out that he was part of Connor's pirates, and they yeah. captured our group in on the Abigail. And over through the course of two episodes, it was kind of, you know, just our group being captured, Reed and Connor trying to decide what to do with us, and other pirates wanted to take Abigail, and crazy infighting ensued, and it was just, it was kind of weird. Wasn't it something, like, didn't he get killed by Alicia tricking him or something like that? So, yeah. So, during negotiations to make trades for releasing um, Alicia, Travis, and others, uh, Reed was stabbed by other prisoners who were waiting. So, they were uh, kind of going along with Madison you know, with her. So, let's fight. So, um, as Reed was stabbed, he was kind of mortally stabbed. Chris, bitch Chris, eventually, <laughs> kill, <laughs> eventually kills Reed but doesn't stab him in the brain. And Reed eventually turns. So Daniel was like, oh, we could use this. So during the trade, they put a bag over Reed's head. That's right. And Connor was like, I will release your family if you give me my brother. So they do this. But as Connor gets his brother, he pulls off the bag. Yeah. He sees he's turned. Then it, then Reed, his zombified brother, bites, his, bites Connor. Connor bleeds out, and then Reed actually kills off a couple of the other pirates, yeah. and that's how it that story ends. <laughs> Wasn't this the, one of the first times we got to see a pregnant girl? I think one of their one of their girls, I think, Reed and Connor, I think so. was pregnant, and we were all questioning. And I think she even mentions it, mm -hmm. like she's worried that she might if, it dies, if it dies, she might turn. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I I only ranked them this low because one, we didn't get enough of them. No. Two, I just don't think that they were, again, that powerful um, or organized. I think they were simply, and it was right during, you know, pretty close to the fall. Um, so, yeah, it was right in know, season two. The, so. These were guys these that, the Abigail, so, that yeah. you could make an argument were just trying to find a way to survive yeah. and just made some really bad decisions. It's not like they were yeah. full on evil. It wasn't a big group. Yeah, the reason I have them this low is just because, again, they were only in two episodes. Uh, the concept was cool. Um, it was right at, It was right in season two, so after the fall, they were on the Abigail. Yeah, they're pirates. You could see that they could definitely have you know pirating going on around that time. Oh, I mean, I mean not around that time, but just pirating in general. Yeah. But it was a cool concept. But yeah, these were just really guys that were just. I wouldn't. They weren't like strung out, but they were just. 
they wanted to get shit done and they did things badly and yeah. they were decent villains. I think they could have, if they wanted to, they could have really rolled that out to make it a little bit better and yeah. bigger. But I think it was just a small piece to just have some villains around that time before bugging out and then dealing with the bigger stuff that we got in season two. Yeah. So yeah. not too bad. So number seven. Seven. I have Dakota. Same. <laughs> really? Same. Yeah. Same. So season I, six. I, I suspect that we're, I'm kind of trying to peek at your list, but I suspect <laughs> that we're going to probably even out uh a little bit. We might have some differences towards the top, but yeah. I, D- so Dakota, go ahead and uh, you want to give some details? Yeah. So Dakota, um, you know, she was a former member of the Pioneer. She was a former member of the Survivor Group. Yep. Uh, she is the daughter of Ginny. Um, originally, when we met Ginny, when we met um, uh, Ginny from the Pioneers, we, originally when we met Dakota, she was the sister. Um, that was what uh, Dakota has grown up to believe that she was the sister. But turns out, she found out later that Ginny and her uh, that her mother is Ginny, and uh, Ginny was pretty brutal even before the apocalypse. I think she killed her own parents, which that was her Dakota's grandparents in a sense. But um, she she went a little bit insane once she found out that Ginny was her mom. Um, she had a lot of hatred and a lot of just a lot of hatred in general of gr- her, her growing up, of course, growing up before the fall and then everything after the fall and then learning all this stuff. But and, well, and then it, Teddy it took a, it. Well, that's a little bit later, but it, it yeah. did take a toll on her um, when she found out that Ginny is her mom. Yeah. Now, um, she did kill one of our favorite characters. She killed John Dory. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> she killed John Dory. She actually also killed other pioneers as she was set. She set people up yeah. because she was, she was just weird. She was crazy in general and she set other people up. Now, when she really started going crazy was when she was being manipulated by Teddy. Yeah. And that's the thing is she was already a few fries short of a happy meal. Uh, crazy. Yeah. Bat shit. Crazy. She was. Uh, and it didn't help that Teddy came along and started using that against her. Mm hmm. Yeah, using her and basically telling her that, you know, we have to destroy the world to bring everything whole again, to begin again. And, you know, she says, you don't have, basically saying, like, you don't have to change who you are. You know, don't change who you are. Be who you are. And she she took, like, a just a 360-degree turn, and she went from, okay, really nice, decent, kind of just, you know, crazy girl in a sense to full on, when she killed John, was like, that was it, dude. Now I thought we th- we all thought John was going to yeah. be able to talk her out of it. It looked like she was about to put that gun down, but she enjoyed it. She had no remorse. I think she enjoyed she it. She enjoyed it. She really enjoyed it. I think it. she even says that. Yeah, dude. That it, she wanted to kill it him. It was brutal. Yeah. It was brutal. And that's something that we've we have not seen really in a kid. Now we saw, you know, the two the the one girl in the Walking Dead kind of take a turn against her sister, but she kind of just went crazy. Yeah. Yes, Dakota went crazy. But she went ruthless, and they expanded on that to make her into kind of like a semi-villain, in a sense. Yeah. And I thought what they did was great, and the actress did an amazing job. Yeah. I, I almost think of it like, you know, the movie Two-Face, you know, with John Travolta yeah. and Nicolas Cage, how they both switch characters. Like, you can just switch like that. It was freaking awesome, dude. Like, yeah, I mean, I, very. the actress was amazing in that role. Mm-hmm. And, and so, uh, you know, I have her so low, uh, seven. Lower. I wouldn't say low, but like, yeah. But, it, but yeah, yeah, but just because, you know, the sample size was small. But, it was. you know, when you have hatred for a character, it means they're doing something right. Yeah. Um, and we hated her. I hated her. We hated her. Mainly because of her killing John. For killing John, yeah. But, but. she was just nuts. She was crazy. She did eventually kill Teddy. Um, she I also remember that I thought they died together. Nope, she killed him uh, because she found out that he was using her, and she shot him in the chest. Ah, oh, that's right, she killed him. Uh, yeah, that's right. And, and then, then she killed herself when the warhead exploded, and she stayed outside and was basically she wasn't fully incinerated, but she was burned to a crisp. Yeah, yeah. So she yeah, that suicide. shot was amazing. The shot was amazing. Yeah, really, really great character. Good semi-villain she wasn't the main villain of that series or the season but she was a good semi-villain i think they did a a really good job with that character yeah so it's really good so number six i have melvin mel from the vultures so do i so do you all right (laughs) (laughs) now this is season four this is kind of the first half of season four of the new era of fear the walking dead now he was a leader of the vultures the vultures weren't that insane 
of a villain, but the reason I have them higher than, let's say, Dakota is because they were around a little bit longer and they were very intriguing. Yeah. They were very interesting. And then introduced, and, and a lot of things, of course, happened in season four. Um, Mel was very, he was very charismatic. He was cocky. He did show a little bit of a softer side. He really did care for Charlie. Um, he brought Charlie in. I think he cared about his people, too. He cared about his people. He yeah. did. Which yeah. you could say most villains do and don't, depending. <laughs> like, like Negan loved his, Negan loved his yeah. his community. Yeah. Melvin loved his community. He had a he had a brother named Enos who was a little bit off the rails, but Mel Mel was a decent Mel was a decent character. I liked the, the concept decent. of it, uh, mm -hmm. meaning they they're they're vultures. They go from community to community and take what they want, or and just basically run it, or wait wait out a community to till it runs to the ground. That's just what I was gonna say because when they were having beef with Madison, he was like, "That's all right, we'll wait you out," and they literally just brought out lawn chairs and outside sat the in the stadium <laughs> and were waiting for them to die. I like that concept. <laughs> I really did. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows how long it would take, but they're going to be patient. That's right? the realistic part you get to. Yeah, like yeah. a community can actually thrive for many years. Mm. So not necessarily buying that, but I just liked how, I mean, they rolled up like they were a, a, a carnival. Yeah, they did. From out of town. Yeah, they did. Know? Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, what they could do is they could basically take away the resources on the outside so that you can't be able to get out and get your things that you need. So then they, yeah, they can wait them out. It may take a while, but over time, if your but, resources are running dry, then you're just going to be it. But for the vultures, it wasn't just about, hey, we're going to show up like a vulture. We're going to fly over you and wait for you to go extinct. Right. Mm -hmm. It was, we're going to deploy tactics to make sure that you get there faster. Meaning, yes. make sure you fall faster. And mm -hmm. that was the Charlie aspect. Yeah. They infiltrated your group. They purposely did stuff from a mind perspective mm -hmm. that pushed along that decaying of communities and societies. Yeah. I would be curious to know how many communities they actually were successful in doing this at. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So. They, they were an interesting group. It, was, it wasn't too bad. And um, so Mel eventually left the group after his brother Enos planned to take over the stadium with hundreds of oil soaked walkers. So that's the good thing about Mel is that he did not agree with doing that, because why would you do that? If we're wanting to take over the stadium, you're going to release these oil soaked walkers into the stadium. The state then our home is going to be gone. Why would you burn that down? And Enos had so many issues with the group. He's like, I just want to get it done with. Let's just kill them and, and get what, take their shit. So he eventually left um, during the fall of the stadium when it was burning down. Uh, they did take the uh, uh, the Emrat. Uh, Mel took it, but uh, he actually saved Charlie from dying in that fall from the stadium. Uh, he was eventually killed by Alicia when Alicia and the group uh, tracked him down. Um, he did kind of turn into a coward. Um, he started running away in the ambulance and Alicia... Uh, blew him up with a grenade launcher. <laughs> <laughs> and as Mel was crawling out, we got to see this awesome shot of Alicia just like kneeling next to him, just brutal on her face. And then she eventually used the weapon that Josh can't stand to kill him. But it was it was it was yeah. awesome the way the, she killed him. The end him, of an yeah. AR, was it? Yeah, the end yeah. of an AR, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so Mel uh and the vultures, I think they could have done more with it. But um, how they wrote that piece of the storyline in season four, that was really to see uh, what was happening to Madison and why Madison wasn't around. Yep. So fake death and then <laughs> the actual death of one of our great characters. But again, that was his choice. So I'm staring at your list. Are, you, <laughs> are we all the same? No, okay. we, we veer off. After Towards this the next one, we're, okay. we're same on the next one. So right. uh, number five, both Jarrell and I appear to have Proctor John. Proctor John. I almost put Proctor John ahead of Virginia. Mm. Um, so Proctor John, very small presence in the Fear of the Walking Dead. What? A yeah. few episodes? A few episodes in the second half of yeah. season three. Um, all, uh, made it up to the climax of the, the, the finale of season three. We we like him just because it was an interesting take. I mean, he's he's part of the Proctors, who was a former mo a motorcycle gang, who was brutal from what they say in the wikis. Uh, 
prior to the apocalypse. Or and more he, just, he was brutal himself. He was brutal himself. Um, so I have him ranked so high because when we do see him, when we do get scenes with him, and, and, and once we start finding more about him, he very ruthless very powerful very powerful they they didn't really show a ton of his power um i remember uh but they didn't need to they didn't need to but uh he had some interesting scenes with alicia because um alicia was with i can't remember i think she was captured by them or she forcefully was she yeah she was captured by them um and then there were some good scenes with her and proctor john when john was getting he was like getting surgery done. I think he was On shot back. or stabbed or something. He had some yeah. a bad back or something. He, oh, needed, that's right. he yeah. needed surgery. He needed surgery. And what was it? Alicia helped, helped. with that surgery. And, yeah. and I kind of liked that too, where Alicia realized how bad, how realizes how bad this guy is, but mm-hmm. like they develop a relationship, like not, not a romantic relationship, but some kind of respect for each respect other. Respect for each other. And I yeah. I just, I wanted to see more of Proctor John. I think we all did coming out of that season. We really did, yeah. He was uh, he was also the owner of the Bazaar, which is the training center down, uh, they were in Baja, California, Mexico. Uh, Baja, California is a state of Mexico. Um, and during the finale, that's when Nick uh, blew up the dam and status of proctor john is unknown we never got to find out if he survived if he died now they were running away before uh nick really pulled the you know press the button but he was a <coughs> sorry he was a good character I, yeah. I really wish they would have done more with it and there were some other characters along the way in fear that we got introduced to and never saw again and proctor john's one of them yep um unfortunately wish we would have saw more of him but I think um, I don't know what where I don't know where they would have gone with him uh, because the whole aspect was really the dam because they wanted the dam too they wanted to control it. Um, God, uh, I don't you, know. You I don't would, know what they. I mean, it was I was all down you, in Mexico, so yeah. You would have you would have had to gone the route of Proctor keeps Alicia, mm. and well, there was no Madison, um, and maybe some of the group- well, Madison was around, but she wasn't. She didn't get there until late. This was season three. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and, and Madison frantically goes after mm-hmm. Proctor John. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's the, probably the only way they. I'm sure they could have thought of something else. But right. Yeah. Just a really strong character. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, Madison was in other parts of Mexico because yeah. I remember um, she got there late when um, when Ophelia passed. Yeah. And that's why Daniel was so pissed at Madison. So yeah. Uh, so number four. And I'll have to explain why, but not that he's higher, but my number four is Troy Otto. My number four is Virginia, Ginny. Yeah, my number three is Ginny. So the reason I have Troy below Ginny in number four spot is Troy really didn't become a villain per se until we saw him again years later in season eight. He was starting to. He was always a villain. Yeah. yeah. Let me put it this way. He always had the traits to he be had a the, villain. He had the traits to be a villain, and, and we saw things come out during, you know, season two, you know, season three. And yes, when he was, you know, he released the horde on his own community. But it, it to me, his, his true villainous aspects and everything came out when he returned again in season eight. Um, I, I love Troy Otto, love the character. And, you know, in, in season two and season three, it was kind of like, you know, we got introduced to Troy. He was, you know, learning that, you know, Troy was doing experiments on walkers to find out, you know, how long you turn. And he was just trying to keep his family survive. They were at the base and then also at the at the ranch. Yeah. And small things came out. And I, I do love, you know, the aspect when we got Troy and Nick together. I think Nick kept him grounded. Nick kept him grounded. Yeah. So that's that's why I have him a little bit lower just because he didn't. To me, he didn't fully go true villain until season eight. Yeah. And when he did go true villain in season eight, it was okay. It was all right. It wasn't it was all right. great. And I wish it would have been done better because Troy deserved that. Yeah. The actor deserved it. And I think the character deserved it because we assume Troy died in the damn explosion and when Madison hit him over the head with a hammer. And then he comes back. <laughs> We're like, what, Troy? And his story arc was weird he had a daughter and then he proclaiming that he killed alicia and proclaiming that you know the daughter of the, the his daughter is actually alicia's daughter and it, 
it got all weird, but in the end, it was his true daughter. I have his daughter. Troy at yeah. number two, and the reason why I have oh. him at two is because of how vindictive he could get, and and he, I just he was a little bit more of a threat to me than than the others, and I can kind mm-hmm. of explain. But from number four for me being Virginia, I just I don't know. She came off as kind of a weaker villain for me. Like, yes, she had all these groups or she had all these communities, but did she like we I didn't really see a presence of her being in control of everything. Yeah. So uh, I mean, she had a group that mm-hmm. I don't know what strand wasn't strand a part of that special group that towards the end. Yeah. Towards the end. Yeah. I, so Virginia again, mine's my number three is Virginia um, seasons five and six. I actually really liked Virginia. Leader of the Pioneers, Mother of Dakota, like we've mentioned. Um, she was ruthless. I mean, she did kill people that opposed her, but she did buckle under pressure. There were many times where things would get too rough for her or yeah. things would come up and she would buckle under pressure or have somebody else do her bidding. Um, she did. So the Pioneers had many communities. They had maybe six spread out, but we never really saw those. Yeah. Um, she. They were also trying to control this kind of oil factory as well, but she couldn't even kill Morgan. Yeah, that, <laughs> dude, that that ending scene was freaking awesome. Yeah, like wow, she shoots Morgan and left Morgan to I don't die. Know. By I'm Walkers, not saying but, she was not a strong yeah. villain. She obviously is to be up there as my number four. She had a moral side to her, but it didn't come out as much. It only yeah. came out in certain situations. Yeah. Um, but I, I just liked I her. think like when I think of a villain, I I think of like pure psychopath, pure just mm. evil, and and I didn't really see you know, that, that psychoticness in, in her, right? You did when, well, you did when she was going after Morgan, killing Morgan or attempting to kill Morgan. You did. You saw it, you saw it very rarely. I I do understand what you're saying. That's why I mentioned that she buckled under pressure a lot is because when, when things got hard or when, even when Morgan was messing with her, You'd see her face turn like she's going to be ruthless, but then that's right. She didn't I really remember that. Do much like she hired a bounty hunter to go after Morgan instead of going after herself. I, from, like, a, from a standpoint though of of sheer numbers, she's probably the top. She had a, she had a big group. She had large large group. Mm-hmm. Um, large so group. I guess there is that to say that she is a strong enough leader to maintain leadership yeah. in a large group. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Yeah. In the end. Um. She was killed by June. Uh, they they kind of brought the pioneers to an end. They captured uh, Ginny, and June shot her in the head. She's like, fuck this shit. Boom. And she was out. So you're at number three on yours. My number three, guys, is Victor Strand. And Victor Strand is my number two. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Victor Strand. I went Troy Otto over Victor Strand. Um, I don't know. They were pretty close. Victor Strand being your number two and high up enough for me at number three, I put there because he is one of those people that can just garner enough respect and and power. He loves power. Mm -hmm. That is a a villain, like loving power, wanting power. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was evil enough when he had the power to be ruthless in killing whoever he wanted to kill. It didn't matter. It was brutal. Yeah. I, I have him up. I have him at number two because one, I absolutely love Victor Strand as a character. Yeah. And you could say he is basically one of the only villains on this list that has been th- through the entire series. Now he wasn't a villain early on, yeah. but he had weird tendencies. He, you know, Victor looked after himself. Um, yes, he became family with our group, but he still had idiotic things that he did to basically, in a way, backstab our group because he wants to survive. Now, the focal point, the turning point for Strand was during, uh, you know, season six during the, uh, the warheads, the nukes. And when those went off and he was by himself and he went into that tower, he wanted, he really wanted to put his name into history he wanted to be victor strand because before he 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 felt like he wasn't acting like he was supposed to he was acting like everyone else wanted him to but now now he can act like he wants to Mm -hmm. and when he did my god he was brutal 
he attempt he attempted to kill Morgan. Yeah, uh, and and so uh, I uh, mean, one of the reasons why I have him up there so high is because simply because he was a he was a friend of our group, and yeah. and he was able to use that against them. Mm-hmm. Can, um, yeah, I just he can manipulate them. He could you know speak the way that they he knows how he needs to speak to them to kind of change their minds. I mean, he's throwing people off the tower. He kills Alicia's somewhat love interest. I wouldn't say really a love interest, but the guy who saved her life um, after she cut her arm off. And like he he was just brutal. I, I would brutal. make an argument that if Alicia wasn't in and around that area and, and was truly gone, Victor Strand would have continued his path of ruthlessness. Yes, he would have continued. 100%. He would have continued. He had a following. Um, a very close following. He, he would have expanded that following, mm-hmm. guaranteed. Only letting people in. You know, they have to call in on the phone and give their reasonings to come in. Sometimes he would go out and meet them. But if you don't give him the right answers, he's like, nope, leave. And you can't, like, then go in and try to get in because he surrounded the tower by walkers. Yeah. He <laughs> and, killed Charlie's love interest, too. Yes, he did. He threw him off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. So it was hard to see him in that role, but I thought it was great seeing him in that I thought, role. But in the end, I thought it was great. And that's the kind of thing where Dude, I want to talk like, about Two Face, about how Coleman Domingo just switched. Yeah. You know, he switched that character. He's like, all right, I'm going to play a villain now. I'm going to be a villain. Now. We opened up like one episode of him sitting in a chair with rings, a cane, and a, and a, and a, like an like a, an umbrella an eating em- grapes an emperor hat yeah yeah. <laughs> like, yeah it was like it was like an old like maybe civil war like he was a king military hat and, yeah, yeah and he was soaking in the power he and so- he loved it that made it even more better yeah. so like for me yeah victor strand was up there he loved it so much it was the reason i say it was hard to see is because he was he's been he's been part of our survivor group for so long and there for them for him to turn on our group Fully. Now he did allow some people in. He yeah. allowed June in. He allowed Wendell in. But like, like he the 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 thing that really happened, like you mentioned, if Alicia wasn't there, Alicia really helped him to to get back to ground zero because yeah. he loved Alicia so much. He loved Madison so much. So the course of the loss of Madison at that time, he you know he aspired to keep Alicia safe and to do to turn his life into how Madison was kind of trying to do things and how Alicia was doing things. But he felt that he was doing it for them instead of doing things for himself. So now that he had the opportunity to do things his own way, that's where he went more ruthless. Now, then you're like, well, why, why do you think he went so ruthless? Why did he become so brutal? I can't answer that question. Survival, But it's survival. And to mm-hmm. then, because he has the authority he has to give out authority to yeah. keep that power so I mean, people won't turn against him. When we first meet Strand, very the first time in season one. Charismatic dude. He was the type of dude that like he only cared about himself. You could see it in the way he dressed, the mm-hmm. way he talked. He like was in a suit. <laughs> and this isn't like he was always that way. Yeah. So it wasn't you know, it wasn't anything it was even I think it was even cooler seeing him as a villain. You know, having seen him progress throughout the seasons, Mm -hmm. him killing the guy in the in the um, I don't know, holding facility. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Knowingly killing the guy. So the walkers would go. So the walkers would go after him. It was a shame. So he can escape. Yeah. Yeah, dude. (laughs) It's, It's like the things like that that we saw progressing up to the point where he was the true villain. Yeah. We all knew that Strand would could was capable of that. What the brutal thing about that scene, though, is that he saved the guy's life first because he was being attacked. Yes, yeah. And then as he as he was done he and they saw leg. more coming in, he just goes up and knifes him. Yeah. And <laughs> like, dude, just but that's the thing. Like he even did. He even did things at the at the ranch. Like he left. Like yeah. he he packed up a vehicle of of uh, uh, food supplies and yeah. had it in a car. And I think Madison caught him. He was like, what are you, you know, she was like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm preparing. And this is, this is why Daniel, Daniel knew who Daniel he really knew was. Who he was. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and that's why they, they never got along. Cause Daniel oh. saw right through him. Yeah. Even though strand, yes, would stay and help. But if there's an opportunity for strand to get out by himself, if he'll, he, he'll if take his it. life is threatened. Yeah. 
and and there's a way out or yeah. if, if his life is threatened he's finding a way out He'll and that's that's what i loved about that character and that's why i mm-hmm. honestly probably should have had him at number two instead of troy but yeah yeah love or hate him i mean i i loved him i hated him i loved him but i i love the character all through and through till the end it was awesome yeah. and i think his his ending in the series was great yep. it was really great so number one, guys, our best villain, which we both agree on, which I kind of in a way knew it was going to happen because we've talked about this before, too, is Theodore Teddy Maddox. Second <laughs> half of season six and the first half of season seven. My God, Teddy and his doomsday cult. Yes. Wow. Now, this- Teddy was brutal even before the apocalypse. This guy was a serial killer in the pre-apocalypse, killing a woman, and was hunted by John Dory Sr. Now, John Dory didn't have enough evidence to put him away, but eventually, Teddy did go to prison. He was in prison for 20 years and only escaped because of the fall. (laughs) And when he got out, if you guys remember seeing um, uh, the one one, uh, webisode that we watched, uh, he ran into Riley, who was the submarine captain of the sub, uh, if you watch that one, check it on the channel. That's when when Teddy and him get introduced. That's why Riley is such his uh, secondhand guy is because he teaches him about the beginning, the rebirth, and his whole plan of nuking the area and nuking the world in a sense to have the to have the world rebuild itself. And that was Teddy's plan very vindictive very just mind he can manipulate manipulation like the the scary Mm -hmm. uh psycho like had all the elements of of a villain the way that he talked like he talked so calmly actor was an amazing choice oh my god he talked so like calmly but like you you look he like he'd open his eyes wider when he gets to things it's like dude like this and the smile you know, yeah. he's just like smiling the whole time. Like that, if I'm not mistaken, like we got a like a prequel scene of him in prison. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Awesome. Just awesome. And when he's talking to Alicia, oh, yeah, and he's got dude. Alicia captured, uh-huh. just the way he talked, it was just. It was insane. One of the best decisions in writing that they did you know towards the end yeah they they did they did his character amazingly and the people around him were great riley riley was good um uh, you get a little bit more of riley's backstory in uh god i think it's called dead in the water yeah, yeah. dead in the water well check that out on the channel we watched the full one it, it's basically his backstory leading up to when the submarine uh came ashore Runs to around. galveston and that's when he first meets teddy but um Teddy was his character was interesting, and I, I thought that the the arc that they did about the whole doomsday thing and how Teddy was grooming people to basically just commit suicide and you know be dead for then the world to rebuild itself. It's just it's crazy. just this, this is the type of villain that that it's one of those villains that I think would have worked in a multi season yes. you know setup. Yes, like if you had Teddy for like two or two seasons. Mm-hmm. Oh geez, it'd be awesome. Yeah, we only we only got him in the second half of the f- second half of season six and the first half of season seven. So, yeah. but I mean, sixteen up. Ep- well, let's see, what was it? Uh, sixteen, right? Uh, sixteen seasons. So yeah, I mean, like sixteen seasons. Well, sixteen up, ep- sixteen yeah. episodes per season. I think so. It wasn't a full season we got with him, but I, I agree. If they would have expanded that a little bit more, it would have been cool. Yeah, it would have been cool. Yeah, because there was the John. Dory senior John Dory senior aspect, aspect of him finally yeah. getting to Teddy again. I mean, you and- could have opened up John Dory senior with him tracking Teddy over the years and yeah. not just throw this in as, Oh yeah, this is the guy that I could not right. convict. You yeah. know, it's just, I just thought well, there was a lot more that could have been done with that. that yeah. They did it right. Don't get me wrong. I just, it yeah. could have been awesome to have more. He falsely got him convicted. He, yeah. he used he used evidence that he planted evidence basically is what John Senior did because he couldn't allow Teddy to continue on because he knew he knew it was Teddy but he didn't have that final piece of evidence so he planted it yeah so but yeah I I thought Teddy was just we thought I I wouldn't say I we thought Teddy was amazing yeah um we loved that character we thought it was cool now yes you know they're only setting up warheads in the Galveston area from the sub it wasn't like a whole world thing of course but i mean 
To Teddy, it was. Galveston's to, done. To Teddy, yeah, and his to Teddy, group, it yeah, was. Teddy, it was group because he thought, like you know, he thought more of the fallout would you know sp- then spread to other areas. Now, of course, with these being you know w- specific warheads, you know we're not military guys. We know that yes, specific nuclear weapons, if you, the fallout will be pushed miles and miles, states even yeah. half the globe it can be contaminated. But he he was just more set to Galveston and. S- Mostly surrounding areas, which we saw in fear when, you know, we're seeing the yellow haze everywhere, <laughs> which I got the yellow orange haze everywhere for a while. But in in the all in the overall aspect of the Walking Dead universe, it did nothing. Yeah. I mean, just in just in the south in those areas for a while, but nothing really. Just yeah. not spread everywhere else. So it in a way it didn't really have a lasting effects on the Walking Dead universe as a whole. Which was I, I really wanted the fallout to then show up, you know, elsewhere, elsewhere. But I don't again, know, not after seeing it for uh, what a half season afterwards, right? And having to deal with all the inaccuracies that we saw. Well, because of people's when, noses falling off. Right. But, but I mean, like, you know, when <laughs> when this season was out, I mean, The Walking Dead was God already ahead. Yeah. So. No, yeah, I you couldn't get, I, really. You couldn't really have yeah. the you know the the consistency of having some fallout yeah. affecting everywhere else. The but. only where the only crossover we've seen of it is in the 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 opening scene of um, the ones who live, where they show the nuclear site down in Texas. Oh yeah, so I mean, CRM the was, a, was aware of this event. Yes, because yeah. the CRM had a fuel a fuel depot in that area. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, guys, uh, many great villains have come and gone. Uh, any any honorable mentions? Like, what, what about the truck guy? I forgot his name. No. They, they, see, the thing about that. I know what you're talking about. The thing about that character is they really made him seem like he was, they were setting him up to be a villain. They really, at least in the the trailers that we saw, mm-hmm. you know, that opening time where he opened his, uh, we heard his voice. Yeah. It, it, it was like, I remember you and I being excited about that. I think that was, I was, forgot his name, but Ginny killed him. Yeah. In the oil fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. was kind of part of the whole um, second half season four through season five as they're helping people. He was uh, the trucker, one of the truckers who was doing the, the doing the good deeds. And I think they took over, I think, one of his facilities, and then he got it back, and he was on the radio or whatever talking. And like Josh said, they set him up as like, this dude's going to be a villain. Yeah. And he really wasn't. He was a good guy. And then he got he got killed by Ginny, of course. But honorable mentions, no, not villain-wise. Um, Otto, the father. He didn't really be a villain either. No. Yeah. It was all Troy's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i can't think of honorable mentions i mean there were honorable mentions of characters that we've come across that we've wanted to see we did a video on that one black girl who alicia ran into yeah. which would have been cool but they never did anything again and um uh, there's been plenty of other characters that have come and gone but villain wise i think that's pretty much it we'll have to do a walking dead one. Oh, guys yeah let us know if you want to do a walking dead one i think we want to that'd be massive that's gonna be big yeah. um I don't know if we'd have to split that up to like main villains and then sub villains or something, but we'll we'll definitely do a Walking Dead one. We'll you got to bottom that together. Um, the Walking Dead. Yeah. Oh, I'd have to go back through the list because I'm I I can't think of it at the moment. Um, I know the wolves were disappointing. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was leaning towards the wolves. The wolves were disappointing. I know there's some that we're just not thinking of that are yeah. probably worse than the wolves. Uh, the wolves are disappointing. The reapers were disappointing. Reapers are down there, dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the reapers are uh, down the there. The reapers were disappointing. Um, yeah, I'd have to I'd have to pull the I, list. Like I said, there's, I know that there's more. There's you know, others. There, yeah. there are. Yeah. So let us know your rankings from this Fear the Walking Dead list. Your eleven worst to best, best to worst. However you want to do it, let us know. We definitely want to see that. And um, stay tuned for the Walking Dead rankings, which we'll be getting to here soon. That one is going to be fun. 25 like 25. 25 long <laughs> <laughs> so once again if you enjoyed make sure you smash the like button subscribe and we will see you guys in the next one i'm jarell i'm josh we're not we're, we're out, out.